Hi and welcome to this flow rhythm tutorial. Um, this time I've been asked by a, a, a viewer to uh, try and do a, a video for um, a bubble sort. So I thought first thing I, I need to do probably is explain how a bubble sort works and roughly how we're going to solve the problem. So a bubble sort um, is exactly uh, that. It sorts by rippling down um, with a bubble going down them and you sort in pairs um, swapping until everything is sorted. So in this example here, the first thing that happens is we need to look at the first two items in the list. Um, we see these are out of order, so we have a temporary variable, which I'll just put down here, so I've got temp. We transfer the three into the temp, we move that one across, and we transfer the temp, which was here, back there so now we've got those two sorted and then we move down so the rest are here so it's two four and five so we now compare these two so our bubble is now over these two and we say are they correct um, no they're not so again the same process goes we one into the temp swap it across write the temp back to end up giving you um, a two and a three there with the one there we got the four and the five and then we move the bubble down again. So those two are okay. We move the bubble down then, and those two are okay. But it doesn't finish there, because the, the problem with the bubble sort, it doesn't actually know whether it's finished. It has to go through the whole process again. And the way we, we keep track of this is when we actually do our sorting, we have to set um, a flag variable. So I have a variable um, which is going to be my flag. So here's my flag here. When we do our sort the first time here, the one and the three, and we swap them round, we set the flag to true. We carry on going, so we've got one and three, um, two, four, five. So we do our next one, three and two. Um, so that would give us one two, three, four, five. Every time we actually swap, we make sure we set the flag to true. So the flag, again, is left as true. We do the next part, three and four. Don't make a change, we don't alter the flag. And the next part, four and five, we don't make a change, we don't alter the flag. When we get back round, the flag is still set to true. So we reset the flag back to false and we start again. One and two is okay, so we don't set the flag. 2 and 3 is OK, so we don't set the flag. 3 and 4 is OK, so we don't set the flag. 4 and 5 is OK, so we don't set the flag. Flag is now false, so we know they're sorted. It's not a very efficient sorting system because you could, as you saw here, be sorted quite quickly in one of the early iterations, but because we made some changes, the flag has to be reset back to the beginning. We have to go through one more full pass to make sure it's sorted for certain. So let's take a look now at how we would solve that using um, flow rhythm. So I've got an example here, so I'll just bring up the desktop and I'll bring up my flow rhythm example. So what I've got here is an unsorted list. Okay, or just a list. And I put five items in my list and these are my items, 17, five, six, five and one. So you can see they're not sorted. One is the last one, so we're gonna have to go through it a few times. I've got my temporary variable here and an item that I'm gonna use for my for loop later, and I'm going to output the unsorted list. So this loop here, if I just draw on here, this loop here, this just deals with printing. This is not part of the sort at all. This is just going through each item, printing it to show that the list is unsorted. Um, oops. If we come down here, First thing we need to do is set the swapped variable okay, to true. So we're going to assume that we're going to go through it at least once. We come through, swapped is always true. We come through, we set the, the flag as off, now we're inside the loop. And we look at the first item um, in the list. Now we're not going to go to the very end of the list, we do minus one um, because the size of the list is less than the length of the list. Um, less, less, less than the last item, but we don't want to use the last item because we're going to be that's going to be part of our swap later. 
because we add one later. So we do our first comparison, we check the first two. If they're not, if they're out of order, which they are in this particular case, we can put one in the temp, swap the two around, bring the temp one back and set the swap flag till true. It keeps going around doing its business until it's gone all the way around once, comes back into the while loop. It was set to swap here, so it must be out of order. So we come back round, it does it again, and if this time it doesn't find anything that needs sorting, then it won't set the flag. So you'll see I'm only setting the flag if you do a sort. So this time it's gone round here. The final bit just prints it again just to prove that it's sorted. So let's uh, let's run it through. So let's bring up our code window. Oops, can we get that on the screen? There we go. Get our variable window. We'll move that across, and we'll step through this a little bit at a time so we can see what's going on. So let's step through it. So we can see our variables initializing. There's our unsorted list. We come through the swap set to true outputs the unsorted ver lot. So let's just go through that. Let's pop that to one side so you can see what's going on. So it's just outputting them. Right, so now that's our unsorted list. So now we're going through it. So there's our first comparison. The swap's been set to false because no swaps happened yet. Step through. First ones are out of order, so we do the swap. And you'll see now the swap's happened up here. We can go around, and if you watch through, you can see it's it's sorting them. Okay, back round, false set again, but we're still not in order. So that's second pass. Back round, false flag set back off. Organizing through. Almost there. So we've got another pass to go through. So swap still true. This time we're out. Okay, there was no swap this time. So we can output the sorted list. So we've got, if we look, our unsorted list 175651, our sorted list 155617. Sorted using a bubble sort, not the most efficient sort, but very easy to implement using uh, Flowgrithm. I'll upload the code so you can have a look at the code um, and download it. Um, if you've got any other questions about sorting algorithms using Flowgrithm, feel free to let me know. Um, incidentally, this will work exactly the same if you wanted to do a um, string array, so you just declare this as a string array. Um, you would put your letters in here and it will sort alphabetically in the same way um, I believe it uses its ASCII value, but um, so you might have some interesting things if you sort capital A's and lowercase a's. But experiment, see what happens. Thank you very much for watching. I um, hope you found that useful. Give us a, um, an email if you've got some more questions.